Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, Mortal Kombat <laughs> is back. <laughs> and we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Campson, and I'm here with Elizabeth Helley. And we fought how many of those? Tyler Hymans. <laughs> <laughs> so many Barakas. <laughs> Oh man, you guys, uh, you know, I felt a little, uh, little tinge of warmth in my heart when I said I'm here with, because we are, uh, in person for the first time in a long time. In a long time for reasons. For reasons. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we probably could have done something in person a little bit sooner, but you, everyone was so busy and it was just like not yeah. happening. So yeah, it was crazy, but this was the right time. We had a little break. Uh, you know, like we talked about, if you haven't listened for a while, we've, we've started up a new format of the show where we're going to kind of pop in with, uh, returning franchises that we've already, uh, you know, new entries in franchises we've already covered and, uh, you know, just kind of like cover a few less franchises throughout the year so that we can have a little bit of a break instead of doing a new episode every week. And we can maybe watch the movies we actually want to watch. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's movies back in theaters if, you, if you're if you feeling up to going. Um, also, we only had one copy of the Blu-ray. That's, That's right. true. <laughs> so we had to come together for Mortal Kombat. Well, we, we, yeah, we were brought together to defend Earthrealm, first of all. Yes. But also... Uh, From the, the, the comfort of our couch. The fine, the fine <laughs> people at Warner Brothers Animation sent us a, a nice Blu-ray. Wham. Home video. I'm not sure yeah. exactly what department, but whoever's in charge of promoting this movie, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> it's a nice screener, and we all got to watch it together, and it was a in lot 4K. of fun. In 4K. That's right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's been a little bit. We just wrapped up uh, Land Before Time, which is crazy, and we're coming back here with Mortal Kombat Legends. Sorry, let me get the title right, because it's a mouthful. Uh, Mortal Kombat Legends. Battle of the Realms. I think I'm still a little bit in Land Before Time mode. I'm really excited to talk about what our favorite song from this is. <laughs> <laughs> what the best musical number. I thought oh, Baraka's musical number was fantastic. There was There is some music to talk about <laughs> at, is, one, at one point. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're back. Uh, we talked about previously Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge. And uh, yeah, as, as Tyler mentioned, thank you to the war- people at Warner Brothers Animation uh, or Warner Brothers Home Entertainment uh, for giving us this screener copy so we could check it out for you. So, um, but before we get into that, you know, we always want to let you guys know where you can reach out to us. Yeah, you can send us an email to sequelrights at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Sequel Rights. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Five stars goes a long way in your placement in the Mortal Kombat tournament. The more stars you give, the better rank that you get, and you might be able to fight someone who's a little bit at your level. Yeah, that's right. Not like Jax. Not like Jax. Like striker. Yeah. Yeah, you get striker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's fight those realms. Shao Kahn. Lord Raiden. I offer an end to the bloodshed. A final tournament that will determine not just the future of our realm, but the others as well. A tournament? Like a, what, karate tournament? It's a whole thing. I'll explain later. Greetings, warriors of Earthrealm. Welcome to the final Mortal Kombat. Never mind, that sums it up. Lord Raiden told us of a child. Soul so pure that he could save the realms. You are that child, Liu Kang. Are you ready? I've been waiting a long time for this. So have I. Fight! This is the end. Oh, wow. I've seen the Shang-Chi trailer so many times that that just sounds like a total rip <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the rap coming. In I mean, I'm sure end. it is. Yeah. yeah. Um. Wow. Those are big words coming from Shao Kahn. The final Mortal Kombat. That's right. 
Of uh, course, he's talking about the tournament within this animated movie, not the final Mortal Kombat game, because that will never happen. <laughs> yeah. Nor or, the final live-action Mortal Kombat Yeah, movie. no way, no way. Nor right, probably the, the final animated Mortal Kombat Okay, so yeah, we should say that the between the time we watched the Scorpion movie and this one, the live-action reboot Mortal Kombat came out, and mm-hmm. while we don't know exactly how well it did because the theaters were like barely open, and so it was like mostly HBO Max people at that point... Um, because that was what the week before Godzilla Kong, I or think right so. before, yeah. yeah. The month before um, something, yeah. Critically, it was kind of mixed, um, especially around that the Cole Young character um, mm-hmm. didn't you and, miss him so much? And and, and amongst us, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can go back and listen to our episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On it. I mean, yeah, it had some cool stuff, like we said, but that whole that character was just such a. Yeah, I mean, nothing. yeah, our our. Please go back and listen to the episode. But if you want the distilled version, it's a Mortal Kombat movie that tries very very hard not to get to the Mortal Kombat. Combat, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as opposed to the animated one which already finished mortal Kombat in the last movie and then came back for this um kind of interesting because we we also watched some of the special features and the creators were saying that they had always planned it as a two film yeah situation. yeah i i kind of hope that i am i'm mixed on it this will be spoilers or my my full opinion but mm. if they kept making these i would keep watching them uh, I will say that the runtime of this movie is 88 minutes long, and I am a big fan of alternative uh, short movies. Well, yeah, well, the fa- <laughs> fantasy lore and and adult animation, uh, but this movie felt a little long. Well, yeah, I was kind of thinking that there was a certain point in the movie where we're like, nah, the movie's done. They're saving this for a sequel, uh, and uh, that's not what happened. But I think it's just like. It's just like stuffed with so much stuff, and there's like three, yeah. three different like storylines, yeah, three main plots happening at the same time. Uh, it's like you'd think that the first movie was Scorpion's Revenge, all about Scorpion. He's probably done or not in this movie, yeah. but no, he's still in it. They, and they basically pick up his story right from where it stopped. Yeah, right. And there's so many characters that there's like characters where we don't even touch on their story, even though they're kind of like referencing it which a lot of you know franchises do that they like depend on what you already know but Mm -hmm. like if i just saw the scorpion movie and saw this movie i would have no idea about what was going on with uh katara and she talked about her realm a couple times but they never explained it like you know and the whole thing with her being his daughter and stuff right and that's i only know that for like from the game i think sort of um and the movie i mean and the live action movie movie. yeah Yeah. that's true true, but yeah it was um it was weird there was a lot going on there's like three whole plots yeah there's a there's a lot of setup before we get to actual mortal combat in this movie yeah and uh yeah there well, was i mean the first setup it's a warner brothers animated okay. pro- project <laughs> and that means that somebody's parents need to be killed in an alley <laughs> <laughs> that's true oh i thought you're gonna i thought you're gonna, I thought talk, you're gonna about talk about the, the intro uh, no the so in the, in the scorpion movie we saw what daffy duck be murdered by scorpion so, in the yeah. logo and so this one is scorpion who gets killed by Shaggy? Shaggy. So, and I, I, there's there Polygon did an article about this yesterday. Oh, really? Uh, and it, it's based off a Dragon Ball Z meme from like 2017, where like Shaggy gets super powerful, <laughs> and then there's apparently a a petition to put Shaggy into Mortal Kombat, oh my God. <laughs> into the game, like but powerful Shaggy. Um, and so I think that Why? that was kind of like a meme. Okay. Which, like, I have no idea. Well, I, you were in the bathroom, but Justin yeah. and I noticed, too, that in the credits that they actually got Matthew Lillard to do that one line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was credited for it. Which, I, has Matthew Lillard been doing all the recent animated Scooby? He didn't too? do the Scoob movie, which was, I think he was really pissed off about, actually. But I oh, think he okay. does the animated TV show. He does shows, the TV yeah. show? I see. I see. As far as I know. Yeah. Yes. But, yeah. So, the, yeah. Instead of uh, Jetty the Week Jet, <laughs> we, get, <laughs> we get, yeah, we get powerful uh, Shaggy. I mean, I think this is more interesting than the weak jet plane. Yes. Honestly. <laughs> but I think it's less interesting than the murder of Daffy. I agree. Like, I think true. that they should be murdering Warner Brothers characters, I mean, not yeah. getting let's, murdered. By let's them. kill Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> or who did they cancel? Um, Pepe Le Pew. They should have killed him. Yeah, yeah that's oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that would have been good. That would have been good. Um, so, yeah. yeah. We dive right into another uh, origin story right. opening, yeah. just like the Joe, last one. Joe Chill. Kills Liu Kang's parents. <laughs> Cho <Cho-cho. laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they're leaving a screening of Zorro and uh, <laughs> a bunch of Barack has come out of nowhere. 
Jordan. <laughs> Slice and dice. I think Luke Hang's mom may Mr. also be named Mrs. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we missed that scene. No, Martha Kang. It, ha- <laughs> it happens. They're killed in an alley, and then like the parents die horribly, which is kind of fun to watch. And yeah, then- but Luke Kang isn't like. Wait, Shao Kahn, your mother's name is also Martha. <laughs> Martha. We haven't gotten to that part. Yet. And also, she wasn't wearing any jewelry. I so. was going to say, can you really kill some parents in an alley and not have a bunch of pearls break? But I was impressed by the Baraka's uh, ability to stab through the mom and not hit the baby. baby yeah. yeah, and she didn't even drop the baby. Good yeah, for her. Yeah. Um, but we've now seen throughout several <laughs> versions of Mortal Kombat that <laughs> Raiden only shows up after they kill the parents, but before they kill the baby. Like, this has happened in, like, three or four of these Mortal Kombat yeah. stuff. And I'm like, why can't he ever show up, like, 30 well, because, seconds earlier? Because the reason that this conflict has been going on for so long is that he's let the parents live in the eons before, and he's found that he can't really form the parent parental <laughs> bond, and it's much better to show up right when yeah. that vacuum, power vacuum is right there. He de- He's decided that he's a better parent than the real parents. <laughs> the parents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's just like, okay, and now. <laughs> <laughs> this is my chance. I choose you, Liu Kang. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's pretty pretty brutal murders right in the beginning. Well, um, and then the mom's dying and she's like, tell him he was loved. <laughs> <laughs> and like, why did Raiden wait his entire life and not tell like he should have been telling Liu Kang little baby loved. Liu Kang like you were loved. your parents loved you so much and now I'm taking care of you and blah 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 but he apparently never ever told him he only he, he only learned about parenting in those few moments that he saw his parents uh, Liu Kang's parents alive so the only thing he saw his mother doing was saying last words before she uh, did so he had to go and do the same thing later <laughs> yeah he's like that's what parenting yeah. is yeah. You, yeah. you expel your your emotions and your last dying right breath right before you die so yeah. You, yeah. you don't have any embarrassment if the kid's like <laughs> yeah. <"Ugh," or> something. <laughs> uh, so yeah that's the beginning of the movie and then we're kind of like off to the Lord of the Rings <laughs> Lord of the yeah. Rings races yeah um yeah this you know uh right away too um this is uh we get to see Raiden just totally destroy these people and you know yeah. the the Baracas and like it's great because this you know much like the last movie we were I think praising the over the top mm-hmm kills and all the crazy deaths and that was again like i think the most fun part of the movie we were just like oh god the eyeballs exploded out of his head or or this one he grabs by the head and like electrocutes him and then his entire body disappears it's really fun i like i credit warner brothers for giving the animation team just full brain to to just have as much fun with this as possible it made me cringe which is a lot and i think that i want to see more you know i want to see more adult animation like this i think that the going over the top like this is maybe not the best um advocate for why this medium should exist in well but it, it would not work for every single property, but no. it works for it works for Mortal Kombat <laughs> because, like you said, the games have already been doing this and the yeah. X ray thing and the zooming in yes. and seeing the inner body parts being ripped apart and everything. And yeah. it, it's so funny because I one that always makes me laugh is like it's not there's no root in physics at all yes. for these things because like a single bullet will slice someone's head off completely clean instead of just <laughs> yeah. going through their neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Which is pretty, it's just so funny. Um, but yeah, we're suddenly, we find ourselves, uh, you know, uh, I I was watching this and I'm like, I need a refresher on what happened in the uh, right. Scorpion's Revenge. But I think, uh, you know, Shao Kahn at the end declared war on the realms or whatever. And now like all of his army is attacking Earth Realm. And it's like our people are trying to uh, hold up at the White Lotus fortress or yes oh, the I, white lotus so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah, white yeah, lotus yeah. <laughs> that's right coolidge is there hanging yeah. out um you know i think that part of that confusion is that the movie lore is muddy the game's lore is muddy and mm. i am going to make a con- take a controversial stand right here and i say that the animated universe is canon i think that it has done the best job of kind of balancing all of this nice. but you're right I couldn't remember which version of the lore we're dealing with no. here. Yeah. It's hard to remember. Um, 
Especially yeah. since it was like, yeah, we did Scorpion's Revenge, then the live action one, movie. and then back yep. to this storyline. So we're like, what? yeah. So if you haven't seen Scorpion's Revenge, yeah, you should definitely watch it before you watch this one. If yes. that's what you want. Oh to yeah, do. it's a, it, they're basically a yeah. uh, three hour. Yeah, it's a movie. part one, part two situation. Like it yeah, would make no sure. sense without that. But um, but yeah, yeah, it's trebuchets and uh, <laughs> galore right away. <laughs> <laughs> Flying trebuchets galore. galore. Yeah. I, I think they were like demon monsters. I don't know what the heck they were, but yeah, I mean, so Mortal Kombat has the main realms or Earth realm, outer realm, and Nether realm. <laughs> and uh, Nether realm is the Hell realm. Outer Outworld is basically like a different, parallel, more brutal universe. Mm-hmm. And so we're not seeing demons here but they might as well be they're the 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 baracas and other things and nether realm is where we see actual demons and other nonsense and that's where we have shinnok and scorpion to contend with but that's kind of our b story right until it becomes the a story yeah okay so one story is all of our same heroes from the first movie Mm -hmm. are together with Raiden and they're going to fight yeah. again for earth. The second story is that Scorpion has been brought to life yet again in hell by Shinnok. Yeah. And they want him to unlock. Apparently he absorbed a key. I don't remember this. I don't remember that happening. Yeah, either. but he, uh, he's the one, he's the only one that can open the magical he door. He swallowed a key. He was eating things that he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> like no Scorpion. No, he can open the door to get <laughs> the be final, <laughs> uh, infinity stone piece that they need yeah. to bring back the one being who's going to destroy all the realms. Yeah. And then the third storyline is that sub zeros younger brother. Yes. And, <laughs> And, and smoke, 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 who I don't even think we met in the last movie. No, no. no. But nope. their friends are being turned into robots, and they're by the leader sad of their ninja order about it. Yeah, their friends are being turned into robots. <laughs> like, is that? I, I don't remember that being the um, storyline in the game. It is. All. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, the I, Lin, I just the Lin, they were robots. Yeah. No. The Lin Kuei. Well, I mean, here's the thing: you have all of this lore that has been done like completely backwards because. Where was the lore in the little booklet that used to come with cartridges? No, 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 no. Oh. I mean, so like, no, like the, it didn't come until like much later when there were l- later games. I mean, like the reason that smoke exists is because they just made a, there was a yellow ninja and a mm-hmm. blue ninja. And then like, what if we made a black ninja? What would his powers be? It's basically like the efficiencies that came from nineties video games for them. Like, what if we had a robot ninja mm-hmm. or like, no one was actually <laughs> thinking of any story behind any of these things. And I mean, I guess, you know, Ed Boon is part of this. He's been part of the Mortal Kombat games since the beginning. I am, you know, I think that maybe I'm talking out of turn. I think that some of the fans, I think that some of this lore was dreamed up throughout the process. But at the same time, it very much felt while you were playing the games, it's just like, yeah. Blue ninja, yellow ninja, black ninja, <laughs> cool. Robot ninja, great. Right, right. Um, Smo- and so some of this all just feels like improvised back matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, Smoke was actually in the uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, apparently, as a robot. What? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Robot version of him. He's been depicted as both a ninja and a cyborg in the uh, video games. Okay. Yeah. Noob cybot. <laughs> and then there's other side stories like... Katana, Katara, Katana. I Katana. always forget which Katana, one it is. Yep. She's mad that she has to be the daughter of what's his face, Shao Kahn. Shao, Shao Kahn, Kahn. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, while well, also kind of flirting with Liu Kang. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Cage is the same. He just wants to go with Sonya. Joel uh, McHale back. Uh, Joel, okay, McHale. Joel McHale is like the saving grace of this movie. Yes, <laughs> yeah. like he's still so funny, even though like you can kind of see most of his jokes coming, but they're still hilarious. Yeah, yeah. the delivery is great. And then we also have uh, what Jennifer Carpenter back is Sonya Blade, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. I believe it's what Jordan Rodriguez is Liu Kang. He was in the last one too, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Raiden goes with Shao Kahn to the gods. Yeah, they're they're all fighting. Like even though the Mortal Kombat ended on the last one, where apparently Outworld can't merge, Shao Kahn is still. Sending raids into Earth Realm, mm-hmm. and uh, they're just gonna have to fight forever. Yeah, and uh, his plan is, I would like to do another Mortal Kombat, and everyone's like, "We just did it. We don't have to wait a thousand years." And then the movie, 
uh, takes a <laughs> makes a global warming commentary. Yeah. It sure does. I wrote it down. Okay, fantastic. So Raiden, so Sonya's kind of like, well, we don't have to do this Mortal Kombat. We shouldn't do it. Let's just keep fighting, blah, blah, blah. And Raiden is like, why place the responsibility on your children's children when we can do something about it now? <laughs> and everyone, like, in our Earth is like, uh, I see yeah. what you did there, Raiden. <laughs> yeah, but if only our Earth was as agreeable as the, pe- the characters of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, because yeah, they're all just kind of like, okay, Raiden. Yeah, that makes sense. As uh, selfish uh, asshole Johnny Cage is in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he goes, him and Shao Kahn go together to the gods and tell them the That's plan. Right. And then the gods are kind of like, okay. Oh, floaty <laughs> dragon ghosts yeah. with also human forms. And they all look like and the one avatars. Orc. Yeah. avatars. <laughs> um, and then like Raiden's like, oh, but P.S. I want to fight for Earthrealm. And they're like, you can't, dumbass. It's called Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <Yeah. laughs> Didn't you see the opening credits? <laughs> So they make him immortal. Yeah, and he's like, take my oh, static shock powers. They make him a mortal, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Not e- immortal. A- he was him- already immortal. They're making him a mortal. They make him immortal. <laughs> he is now the mortal yeah. combat. Yeah. And it looks pretty painful to be immortal. Yeah, it does. But uh the main change is that his eyes don't glow anymore. His eyes don't glow anymore. And then like several like uh, 40 minutes after this happens in the movie, he's like, I'm going to sleep for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> which I, I thought was funny. I also thought, of, uh, you know, when, when Shao Kahn is like, you idiot, I can't believe you're going to hate being a mortal. <laughs> and then Shao Kahn like walks away through a portal. And I was like, oh shit, he's not going to be able to go through that portal or he can't use portals, but it just stays open for him to walk through. Yeah. I thought it would have been funnier if he was like stranded. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in the clouds. Yeah, he's like, no. uh, gods, can you guys help me? I can't do portals anymore. Cut to- Cut to riding on a Southwest flight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to get to Outworld. Bags fly. Like, what? <laughs> Free? I can't what do you it. mean it's a $45 charge? <laughs> what? Boarding <laughs> group am I in? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they pretty much immediately go to Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and yeah. this is like, uh, you know, the last movie was kind of fighting all over this, you know, as Johnny Cage continues to call it over and over again, a de- crazy death island. That's right. Um, this one is like a legitimate, like, there's like a Roman Coliseum. There's actually a COVID-free crowd, so they can <laughs> hang out. And <laughs> I thought it was interesting that, like, through all of the fights in this one that are legit, like, tournament fights, um, there's crowds in the background just going, yeah. yeah. And the crowds cheer yeah. for whoever wins. They don't yeah. really care, even they're though they're there all for vi- They're there for people. violence. That's it's right. a blood gauntlet more yeah. than anything else. They're all well, monsters. and it's kind of weird because they make a big deal about giving the same old speech they always give of like, you know, you can only kill each other like in the tournament. You're not allowed to do it while you're walking around. And we're like, yeah, right. One, because they <laughs> broke that rule every yeah. time. But this time they literally don't break it. They don't even animate any other parts of the world pretty yeah. much except like the one place where they're like sleeping overnight. Oh, and yeah. then, but so I'm kind of like, why did you even bother to like do that then? The so, only, like, the only time we're outside of there is for these other storylines. But yeah. uh, I right. thought that was interesting that it was like, yeah, it was a totally contained tournament with a, you know, an, an actual field of play and everything. But it's completely unclear how the bracket works for this thing. <laughs> yes, because right. yeah. like there are some, matches that are so horribly mismatched. Like the very first match is Johnny Cage versus Spider Devora. Yeah. And yeah. and he immediately like just gets kicked in the nuts. <laughs> and then like she kicks him like two other times and then they're like, "Oh, Johnny Cage loses." And he's like, mm. "But he doesn't get killed." He just loses. And then yeah. everyone else who, everyone else who loses dies brutally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Johnny Cage gets his fatality where he gets punched in the nuts and it's like, "Ow." And then <laughs> Kung Lao gets his fatality done to him, and he is ripped in fucking half. Oh, my God. Kung Lao, I mean, Poor Kung we got to talk about Kung Lao, because, like, this is, like, almost exactly the same way it happened in the live-action movie, where, like, yeah. Kung Lao is brutally killed by Shang Tsung at just for, like, to fridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah although Male he, on male fridging of Liu Kang. Although basically. he didn't have his uh, soul sucked in this He one. didn't have his soul sucked. No, he was killed by Shao Kahn in this movie. He killed by yeah, his own hat. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, the whole thing about that hat is that it kills everyone but him. him. Yeah. I mean, as as a man in Mortal Kombat from Time Memoriam who, who, is, who is a Kung Lao main, mm-hmm. it's very upsetting. 
Yes. More respect for Kung Lao, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it's because they, they like to kill him because everyone really likes that character. So yeah. Well, and it's like, it's... And yeah. he's the most human. Like, he's the most, That's like, true. he just has a hat. He's so proud. Yeah. But all, the problem is, is that the Earth realm people never have any powers and, like, the outer world people are, have, like, insane Same powers. powers. And so, so it's like, you got Johnny Cage who maybe has, like, a fast green colored kick now, but that's <laughs> yeah. not explained. Sonia, she's nothing. She's, she's just, just got guns. She's She's got the Black Widow thigh move yeah. and a bunch of guns. Jax has his rob- robot arms. <laughs> Robots. <laughs> and then, oh my God. So we have Stryker. Kurt Stryker, who's worthless. In my mind, I was calling him <laughs> um, Captain ACAB because he's just there and he's like, yeah, I'm a cop. And he has no powers and no nothing. He has no idea what's going on. And like, the, it that, was funny yeah. that they thought they needed like a guy to be like, huh, what's happening? Yeah. Because <laughs> like, that's like, Johnny Cage anyway. Yeah. So. yeah. And everyone's already all in on Mortal Kombat. They don't need some character to be the audi- audience. Out. Surrogate. Out. Like, so the world. fact that, that Stryker was the only new Earthrealm person, I was like, oh, this guy's going to die hard yeah like because i mean i kung lao i didn't know if he'd die or not but when they introduced striker i was like oh no no no, he's just here to (laughs) die immediately do we want to talk about striker's death because i think it's pretty dope I don't oh really yeah you, do you not want to spoil it or is that what no, you're saying say oh well okay. so striker fights shang sung and <laughs> yeah which uh, i was like nah he's oh, not gonna oh, 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 <laughs> and yeah. he he at the end becomes possessed by shang sung uh is forced to walk himself to get impaled in what like so this uh blood gauntlet that they're fighting in is this giant outworld brutalist barbarian coliseum and he impales himself on a giant spike and then <laughs> while he's like the, the animation here is amazing because they get the emotion of him he oh is aware of what he's doing and is horrified yep his and, face is so stricken. yeah and and he rips his own head off uh, and mm-hmm. with spine and everything yeah, spine yeah. and everything uh it was really funny it was like stop hitting yourself stop it was, ri- stop, yeah, was stop, like, stop, rip, stop ripping your head off stop ripping your head off stop ripping your head off it was done incredibly well it was it was some fine animation yeah it was so great and yeah. like, is it my understanding that uh, from the special features right. that the writers wrote, like, I don't know if they wrote like this character dies and then they send it over to the animators and then it, it seems like, like it. That's what they it were seemed saying. Like they were shocked by how the death. Well, were I, here's, out. here's the thing. I think that they wrote it on the page and they probably wrote, you know, like maybe even that exact thing happens. Like, yeah. however, when you hand a written thing over to an animator and give them free reign to make it like, Hey, make this they're all dark fucked up people okay <laughs> they're like and, finally and, i've been wanting to well, do and this the writer specifically was like yeah well we were gonna kill uh lu kang you know but he could still be alive maybe but then when what i saw what the animators did like they oh, ripped him it off yeah. Yeah. i was gonna bring it back like you know like they they just they don't even you know. Like you know, they don't even talk to each other, I guess, which is kind of funny. Yeah, excited for sure. Just see what they animate, I guess. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Mm. But yeah, you, you know the thing about the order of people fighting, I was just—it was very strange because they start off fighting like, oh yeah, these are like the underlings of the other team, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, Shang Tsung is in there, Shao Kahn is fighting random people. Ryan like, gets his ass kicked multiple times. Yeah. And you're just like, what? I there, didn't know Shao Kahn was going to There is 20 minutes of Earthrealm people getting the shit kicked out of Yeah, like, why does movie. Shao Kahn get to, like, reign over the tournament, but also just, like, be in it? Yeah. Because he was also the one being like, and go, he's, you know? He's, yeah, he's, techni- he's technically, yeah. like, the worm tongue to uh, Shao Kahn. Mm. He's, like, his, like... Oh, you're talk- talking about Shang, Shang Tsung. Tsung. No, no, but Shao Kahn, them- Shao oh. Kahn fought Jax for no yeah, reason. Yeah. It was so weird. Yeah, but he yeah, and he's also in charge of deciding like <laughs> now it's time to murder this person. Yeah, uh, he was basically the receptacle for lines from the game. Yes, and then it doesn't really make sense Toast, because except for Toasty. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I'm forgetting their names now. Uh, the main character, he Liu Kang. Liu Kang. Yeah, Kung Lao is the hat guy. Mm-hmm. Liu Kang <laughs> is the main guy. Okay, Liu Kang defeats. Shang Tsung, the sorcerer, and he One-handed. doesn't even kill him. He's just like, I want you to live so you know how bad I beat you. And it, yeah, and it wasn't even close. Yeah, and so he's alive and he won. And then, but then right after that, what? The Shao Kahn def- kills Raiden? 
Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, I won. And it's like, how did you win when <laughs> Liu Kang is still alive? Like, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, the other players are still there. Yeah, and then Katana comes in and she's like, I'm just going to kill him even though he's not even in the the battle right now. And now I'm the queen. And it's just, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of, there's lots of fuckery going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the it doesn't, the rules don't really matter, I think. Mm. It's like, whose line is it anyway? That's right. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I know, it just makes it seem like, oh, well, Raiden was the leader, so if Shao Kahn kills Raiden, then that's I think that, up. I mean, if we want to be generous about it, it, you know, that he was, Shao Kahn the whole time was expecting Raiden to have some trick of his sleeve, mm-hmm. and once he beat him, he was like, well, I'm not really scared of any of these other Earthrealm people, so, you know, I, I won. You know, everyone else can fight or whatever it is, but, like, th- since he's gone, there's no contest. Mm-hmm. And then, immediately, he finds out the trick that Raiden had up his sleeve is, uh, he chose Liu Kang, I guess. Raiden dies, like, super brutally, too. Yeah. Like, his neck gets crushed. Yeah, and they and have a... Your parents. And he was like... Gloved you. I think he says, your parents loved you, and... <laughs> and then it's like crushed. So he was like, gonna say something else. Yeah, yeah but- and then we see in a flashback that Liu Kang is like... The whole thing stops for him to be like, Raiden, why am I the chosen one? <laughs> and then Raiden goes... Because I chose you. <laughs> and we were all like. <laughs> I mean, and he says some other stuff after that, but still it's like, it's, it was so, yeah. he just paused way too long after saying, because I chose you. So it seemed like that's all he was going to say. Yeah. That, that being said, I do like that. It's not a, some foretold, some foretold yeah. birthright. Like there is something or just like, <laughs> what's your last name? Yeah. <laughs> Liu Kang Thanks, Skywalker. Skywalker. <laughs> Uh, so I think that they thought that that would be a cooler moment, but how it plays out is real fucking funny. Yeah. yeah. It plays I, like a joke, but yeah, it's like the serious heartfelt, yeah. like, yeah, this is I, his dad moment. I applaud them for trying, but it was hilarious in execution. Yeah, it's, it almost sounded like he was like, why am I the chosen one? Because I chose you, bitch. Shut up. Just go out and do it. Because like, yeah. I said like, so. Yeah, yeah, put some fun. Give me a fucking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So what are some of the things that we liked about this movie? Because I feel like we're we're dunking on some of the jokes. Oh, but. I mean, it's incredibly fun. Like this opening. I, I loved that they uh, had the conflict of like establishing the idea of Outworld. I think this actually does the best job of making these realms feel like disparate places. We see this giant Lord of the Rings battle happening true, at true. the, uh, you know, it's the the order that Liu Kang and Kung Lao mm-hmm. uh, were raised in, uh, the Order of the White Lotus. They have all these cool, you know, we see there's lots of guns and machine guns and handguns in this movie, but, you know, the Temple of the White Lotus is fighting basically this medieval battle with these outworld forces where they have giant, you know, gunpowder dragon turrets, mm-hmm. and it's a really cool opening um and i think that they this is a story that does a ton of world building and we're vaguely familiar with Mm -hmm. all of it but it does (laughs) the best job of any of the movies and i think that if you had no idea about any of it going in cold i think you would more or less understand just by the way that they've chose to structure it and You know, the entire second act of this movie, unlike any other Mortal Kombat movie that we've seen, even the last animated movie, is a Mortal Kombat movie. Like, Mm -hmm. there, it is one-on-one fights for Mm -hmm. about, for the whole second act. And even though I think maybe they could have showed a little bit more, but I like the fact that they at least touched upon showing how the realms combining would be bad for normal people, because we haven't really ever seen that either. Yeah. Especially for a Warner Brothers property, for the heroes to actually care about innocent people. And like you know, I think we were we were joking about like how the movie was like only eighty minutes, but it felt really long. But I think it's because like they they just stuffed like so much in, and like there's so many stories, yeah. And and I enjoyed the fact that you know, unlike a lot of the Mortal Kombat movies, there's not there's not a ton of it is like nonstop action, yeah. And there is just like constant fighting, and that's pretty much what you come to the movies for. To see to see the action sequences and you know in these animated ones the crazy over the top kills and I like that it is just it is stuffed full of that it's like it is basically nonstop. Well, and you know we watched the special feature afterwards and they were talking about how they wanted to make it so that things surprising things could still happen mm-hmm. and it would be really easy to do a fan servicey uh, animated 
movie that just kind of follows the beats of the games or some of the movies. And these are very much their own thing. They're taking different paths and telling different stories. And, you know, killing Raiden is a big deal. And the movie treats it as such. And I think that it's really cool to kind of, certainly after 14 Land Before Times. It's easy <laughs> to relegate animation to this thing that is a cash grab or something that you make for super fans and you don't really have to pay all that much attention to. Certainly, this was happening with, there's a bunch of early, you know, in the 2010s, there was a bunch of anim- Marvel animated movies mm. that were fun but didn't necessarily expand on any of the lore or do anything really all that interesting. And I think that these movies are very much their own thing. And uh, they're surprising. They're fun to watch. And the way, visually, just the amount of gore and <laughs> and fatalities and the, the tone that they set with it yeah. doesn't make it feel gratuitous. It makes it feel very much part of the movie that you're watching. And I think that the way that they show the animated violence, like we've seen a lot of different things and you guys have probably seen even more through video games and stuff, but the way that they cho- choose to show the ultra gory animated violence is very unique in my mm-hmm. opinion to this franchise. Mm-hmm. Like, and they have certain things like the x-ray vision and like, it's not just the bones breaking, but there's one even where like a bullet goes and you see it go all the way through the heart and explode the yeah. heart. And like, all this, <laughs> you know, like the way that they always, Always like show things is is cool and unique to me in my opinion. Oh but. well, and I think that the, even when the games they they have yeah. a, an ownership over that. There's right. a real uh, ooh, visceral sal- visceralism. It's visceral. It's visceral. <laughs> v- visceral. Visceral. Yeah, visceral. it's got to be a word. Yeah, yeah it's got to be, be an adjective. Be. But, uh, English majors at us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or a noun, rather. The visceral yeah. is the adjective. Uh, anyways, um, but yeah, I just, because um, I think back to that Highlander anime. Uh-huh. And I'm like, yeah, that was like <laughs> ultra gory too. But I think a lot of times people kind of misinterpret interpret the ultra gore for just more blood. Just put yeah. more blood. More yeah. blood's f- flying out. But it's like, this makes it cool because it actually shows you like what is breaking, what is happening, think, what well, is ripping. Yeah. It's pain. And not yeah. so much on just blood splurting out for well, no reason. It, it's, a, it's, it's really cool because like, you know, yeah, the video games have had, you know, you know, what is it? 30 years or whatever it is, 20 mm-hmm. years uh, to really perfect the uh, art of making these hits uh, hit as hard as possible. Yep. And I think it's really awesome that they were able to translate that now into these two uh, animated films, like really well, in my opinion. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, like Ela said, like she cringed or, you know, yeah. Yeah, Tyler, you, you, you're you like, Ugh, you know, yep. and we're all feeling that. It. It's like you feel these hits and I know that's what they're going for in the games and that's why they added this, like, you know, those X-ray hits and everything. And I just am impressed that they were able to pull that off in a different medium. You know what I think it is too is that the choreography is actually fantastic. Like mm-hmm. every one of those moments is earned and they're led up to by great dynamic animation and camera work where uh, we're seeing the combos that lead to these, you know, devastating crescendos, but it's built up by really solid visual storytelling of how these fights are kind of unfolding mm-hmm. and they're kind of punctuated by these moments of ultraviolence, where in the game, you know, they are doled out as these moments of accomplishment of like, you know, you succeeded in this fight to have it because you're you were very effective in what you did. And they kind of... Um, we were able to do that in a different way and fold it into a narrative language uh, in the choreography here in a way that I think is really, that you couldn't do in a live action movie. And for me too, I think it's almost more interesting to show like forensically anatomical mm-hmm. like injuries happening rather than just like <laughs> blood and guts and squishy bodily mm-hmm. fluids. And you yeah. know, like that's to me not as exciting as what we're seeing here. Yeah. The Jax one is great when it's his robot arm. Yeah. Like, and you see all the bolts and everything cracking. Yeah, it's like an exploded diagram. It's super <laughs> yeah, that, satisfying. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, do you guys want to talk about, like, kind of what's going on in the background of Mortal Kombat that eventually leads us to the uh, final moment? Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of loved this B story of Scorpions immediately back down to Nether Realm and Shinnok's like, I'm going to fuck up your life. Uh, again again yep <laughs> and uh he's kind of he runs away and he goes to Raiden and Raiden's like if I was a god sorry but I'm not anymore I can't help you <laughs> <laughs> he's just like run and hide <laughs> 
He says he gives the same advice, uh, you know, Scar gives to Simba. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Run away and never return. And never return. <laughs> um, but yeah, unfortunately, he gets tracked down by the robot people and also Sub Zero Jr. Um, Boy, I would have loved just to one. Just, I would have loved to see him just work on a fishing boat for like. Yeah. He's like, all right, well, okay, bye. <laughs> this whole thing with the cyborgs is kind of terrifying. It's uh, crazy. Wait, what's like a second Sub Zero should just be zero, right? <laughs> Not one. Negative one. Negative one? That's already sub zero, though. Yeah. That is sub zero. I, I, but anyway, we just call zero. Like the, yeah. the oh, yeah. sub zero. I, I, I see what you're saying. Zero yeah, yeah. minus zero is zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess sub zero is just the mantle of that family or something. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, his brother is taken over, and he's like, I'm going to get revenge on Scorpion for killing my brother. He's full time zero. And it's really funny because I'm, I mean, I can't think of like a single movie where this has happened, but the brother is like, you killed my brother. And, and Scorpion's like, yes, I did. And I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, what? what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had forgotten the whole like plot twist that it wasn't actually sub zero that killed. Uh, it was Shang Tsung, right? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was Shang Tsung pretending to be sub zero. Right. Killing his family. Yeah. I, but I, but even the fact that, he said sorry is just like shocking. Like, even yeah. if even if he knew it wasn't Sub Zero, the fact that he's just like, I did that. You're and, right, and, and not I'm sorry. and not just like sorry, forgive me. He's like, I deserve to die. Here's the dagger, but right. like, otherwise, yeah. I, like, we but have instead, shit to do. they decide to team up against the robot dudes and to try and get All the, the artifact cyborg. thing yeah. before. The I mean, to, to your point, it's earned. I yeah. mean, I, they they earn that team up, and uh, it's uh, they they actually were managed to get this whole. Downfall of the Lin Kuei, which is Sub Bihan and Sub Zero's ninja family, uh, but they were so absorbed by their quest for power that they kind of turned over to technology and lost their soul, which is the thing that happens in the game. Yeah. And they start turning their members into horrible cyborgs. <laughs> yeah, with crazy, gross tentacle fingers. Oh, yeah, yeah a tentacle porn <laughs> situation yeah. was uh, getting smoke in the in the head. Yeah, uh, the you know we we literally just watched the movie and uh, you know weren't able to pre-program all of the fun sounds and stuff. But there was one point in the movie where we were all like laughed out not not the like I chose you part but there's a part where they get up to this <laughs> they get up to this giant door that like you know Scorpion is supposed to open with this key that he's inside of him or whatever the fuck and like we haven't heard the robot the, the cyborg say anything the entire movie and then all of a sudden smoke is there and he's like Place your hand <laughs> on the door, and it's just like <laughs> he sounds like he sounds like Emilio. He sounds like <laughs> place the, your hand on the door, Emilio, Emilio, <laughs> Emilio. I've done that on the podcast before, but like, yeah, he sounds like a little eighties robot, and it's really stupid. It was like he already had kind of like a <laughs> you know computerized voice when he was just regular smoke, but now it's like place your hand on, on the, the door. door. <laughs> what if he's like? Rangers. That would have been better. So funny. I can't even. Yeah, they force him to open it and then they all fight over the MacGuffin. Yeah. Yep. They all fight over uh, the MacGuffin that's called like a Kami Dogu or something. Yeah. Then Philip Seymour Hoffman steals it from Tom Cruise. (laughs) (laughs) They all fly out and uh, have a drink at AMC. Yeah. (laughs) They, they take it to oh, uh, Chinook and he begins to put together the one being, which yeah. is apparently like this thing that was there before everything. Yeah, the Elder Gods rebelled uh, and then kind of knocked the one being out of power and destroyed him. And that is the thing that brought balance yeah. and power to the And realms. as you do, and this happens in like all sorts of things, just like the Lord of the Rings and everything. They divided the one being into yeah. five parts that can never be found. Right, right. Uh, I have to say, though, um, that the robots and the leader tribe leader guy they didn't know they were getting this that's right yeah. they were mercenaries. Chinook, and they were mercenaries and and he's like all right i've got your payment this is what you get for a mercenary and the payment is just to get killed by a bunch of monsters <laughs> and there's one point where chinook is like holding all the MacGuffins, and he's like yeah and he's like chanting or doing something and then it just like changes focus and you see in the background these demons just like chop 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 chopping the robots yeah, it, looked like, like they, it looked like they were playing with them like they were Christmas toys. I think, or something I think like. the funniest part of it was the sound design because it was just an isolated like single clunk 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 clunk. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see one, you see one of the demons like rip off one of the heads and then hold it over its mouth like it's gonna drink blood <laughs> yeah. from it or something. Like it's the Black Death. <laughs> like. Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, all the robot guys just get unceremoniously just get killed by demons, killed. which is amazing because like Scorpion can like fought all of them at one point, and then those four dudes that hunted him down were able to get him. Right. I just like that, you know, when the demons are about to attack the robots, like it goes into like the robot sight mode and they're like, <laughs> do not <laughs> see anything. <laughs> Where is enemy? <laughs> and then they just get wiped. Does out. not compute. Place your hand on the door. Place your Place hand your on hand the door. On the door. So I, I thought for sure the one being was going to unceremoniously kill Chinook right away, but instead he ch- takes his body and becomes giant yeah, yeah. and starts jeering around. He combines the realms. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then Liu Kang becomes a god. Liu Kang gets all fire god, yeah. Yeah. And he turns into a super huge dragon. Turns into a dragon. Which kind of looked... It was an interesting dragon design. It was kind of like... Dragon it was like, slash snake. <laughs> it was too fat to be like the dragon in the Mortal Kombat logo, but it was like too skinny to be like a. I I appreciated that it didn't look like a super like Saiyan dragon, and it mm, didn't look like right. it kind of looked a little ugly and a little mean, mm-hmm. which was cool. Yeah, I wanted to look like the Spirited Away dragon <laughs> or something. You know, like I wanted to be skinny so it could yeah. make the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, Synergy. Uh, yeah. That's the brand management in you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, he. I, I don't understand exactly how they got the one up on the one being. Because Scorpion and Sub Zero come in for a it while. It seems like there was some editing there because, like, Scorpion, like, takes his, like, vision emerald out. Right. Uh, but then in the next shot, it's still there. And uh, then Liu Kang. Yeah. I mean, as, as Justin and I were talking about, like, we're watching this movie, Liu Kang, like, the tournament ends because Liu Kang. Uh, his first of all, his his fight with Shang Tsung is really really cool. Like his mm-hmm. arm gets corrupted, and then he basically neos him. He'd be like, "I didn't even need to." F-. I mean, yeah. it's kind of dumb because like he gets this crazy thing that happens to him, and it's like <laughs> he was letting him win for some reason. Right? He's like, well, that it's was like, real oh. fucking dumb of you. Yeah, you could have just fought him with one hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he, yeah, he, yeah, he becomes the god, and Justin and I were like, "That's the end of the movie. Like the next movie is gonna be." <laughs> You know, them like facing Nether Realm and all this other stuff. And then we get twenty more minutes of movie. Yeah. I thought for sure there was they were like the one being thing is gonna be the whole thing of the next yeah. movie, but no, that it, it all gets resolved. It all <laughs> gets resolved. But uh yeah, I mean, we were joking too because we- I think, I think now to give me, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but we see for the first time ever, uh, Sub Zero flying around on ice. Yeah, <laughs> like he's, he's doing frozen. like a surfer like frozen, frozen. Yeah, yeah. Like, or like a silver surfer yeah. type thing. Yeah, like yeah. he could always shoot ice, but I don't think he surfed on it. No, before, did he? Never, I don't he think we've not. ever seen him. Do I've that. seen him like create a bridge and run across it, but I don't it know about looked, surfing. It looked kind of goofy. And I think, and I think creating the bridge was a lot of work for him. Like mm. I don't think that it was something that he could be. But I mean, it's his little brother is more powerful. Also, they're fighting over lava the whole time, and Frozone's and Elsa's whole thing is like, if there's no moisture in the air, you can't. Yes, do it. It's yeah. the power of friendship. Yeah. And I thought it was funny <laughs> that uh, you know Scorpion was like, "Get over here!" to this like guy who's like seven hundred. I know. Times yeah, it, all it did was bring Scorpion to him. Yeah, yeah. that was one of the, that was the He's fan like, service. I gotta mo- say my catchphrase, even though it doesn't make <laughs> yeah. sense right that, now. And he already said it too. It's like that was a fan service moment that it was like yeah. you could like, he yeah. could do something. Does better. he have to say that when he shoots out the chain? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm coming over there. Yeah, if he's using it as a grappling hook, it shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> Bring me closer. <laughs> Hold me closer. <laughs> but uh yeah, so I think they like basically they distract the one being long enough for Liu Kang to come back as yeah. the dragon again. And then he turns him into a little baby. Yeah. Well he like bites off one arm and then Bites off his leg and then he shrinks something because <laughs> yeah, he turns into a little baby. His energy is spilling out. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like uh, Liu Kang turns back into a human but like a giant person and yeah. then picks him up like, ah. And the one being is is just the whole time like, you don't deserve this. This, this yeah. is not right. It's like uh, Sid from Toy Story destroying a toy is mm. how what his death is like. Yeah, and then it's like over, and Joel McHale is like, "Is it over?" And Luke King's like, "No," and he like flies out into space like Superman, and yeah. then yeah, he does like he has a crazy like you know Doctor Manhattan style answer of like yeah, like 
Is that, are you still Liu Kang? And he's like, I am and am not at the same time. <laughs> right, right. I was like, yeah, what the I was like is this Dr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, he, then he flies around the earth the other way to set back time. Yes. And then all the five realms disperse. Yeah. Yep. They split um, back apart. Everyone's all good. And uh, yeah, th- I guess that's the end. We see a shadowy figure at the very end. We do. It looked like the hat to me. Probably but, Raiden. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It's probably Raiden still alive somehow. Riding the lightning. Riding. Still alive. Yeah, and that and that's it. It's kind of a happy ending. I mean, there's there's that little, you know, that little silhouette of a person that is maybe. Well, and then we saw in the special People features kiss. that the characters were like, Yep, or the, the the creators were like, Yep, two movies, that's it, we're done. I'm like, why? Why wouldn't you just keep making these? Yeah. Well, I bet the, they will. At least the last one was even more clearly like, oh, there's gonna be a sequel for sure. Yeah. Right. This right, one, right. I'm like, eh, they left it where it could just be done. <laughs> I mean, but the games do that too. Like, there's yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a whole bunch of there's there's. I mean, there's they haven't even there. used like not even a fourth of the characters yeah. yet, though. There's even characters I know that haven't even shown up yet. Oh this, yeah. So. yeah, there's a ton. There's a ton. There's yeah. a power vacuum in Outworld. Nether Realm has people. Shinnok is a head that travels around and taunts people. Yeah. Speaking of vacuums, the one being was basically just a vacuum. He was. He was an evil vacuum. <laughs> He's like, the undoing must commence. And then it's just like, fucking <laughs> like up all the buildings. Yeah. I did like that uh, one of the first things he knocked over was a water tower. I was yeah, like, ah, is that yeah, a Warner yeah, Brothers joke? Synergy. <laughs> Funny. Oh, oh, oh. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Happily ever after for now. Yeah, I, they got to keep doing them. I hope so. I would watch them. I, I think that they're really fun. I think that uh, it's great for more adult animation to get out there. We and didn't. I would want to see one that focuses on um, Katara and her clone and her sisters and her mom they could, and all that yeah, stuff. They could yeah. do an entire Outworld focused one. There'd right, be, right. Th- there's, there's lots of politics happening there. It could be really fun. Yeah, I mean, that's probably why, you know, they have the Mortal Kombat Legends yeah. as the main You know title. what I don't want to see is one that's just the military and police humans. No, nobody no. likes that. I They're mean, Johnny worst. Cage, yes, but Sonya, Jackson, what's his... No, Striker? forget it. Forget like, it. Ugh. Yeah. Boring. Yeah, the, the one guy... Uh, from the movie, like the director or something was like, oh, Stryker was the one I guy. I, I was like, did. really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in no, the, g- in the games, uh, Liu Kang eventually turns evil <gasps> and, uh, ends up being nice. a demon and controls nether realm. And, uh, she's always trying to get him back, but then okay. she be turns evil as well. Oh my God. And, and then, uh, they convince them that Raiden's the one that actually put everybody in that position because he was trying to save all the realms at all costs and didn't care who he hurt when he, did it and yeah. I mean the guy who played Striker did uh was reprising his voice uh, from the the reboot uh, in 2011. That's uh that is Matt yeah. Mercer. He mm-hmm. is of uh, critical role fame. He is a uh, a big voice actor. Yeah. Dude. Okay. So that's cool. That is kind of cool. But no, yeah, I'd rather see another one of these than another Cole Young I agree. Live yeah, action. Man. I'm well, sorry. I have a feeling we're probably getting. I think maybe they both. G- that was announced, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, oh well. I'm sure they're gonna. I'm sure they'll be both. Yeah, because they'll want to release another one of these along with the next live action movie, probably. or the game. Yeah, or the game. Yeah. And uh, what I do like about these animated ones is like, yeah, it's a little bit light on the character stuff, but whenever the, because it's all action, when there is character stuff, it happens like within the action or immediately adjacent to the action. Yeah. There's and and they don't bother with the whole like hero's journey. Let me refuse the call for forty five minutes before I finally join the fight. It's like no, they're all gonna join the fight. Yeah. We don't need to. It's, call, just, it's a, it's a oh, tournament. I don't yeah. want to join. Am I gonna get my powers? Am I yeah. gonna do this? Like they just fight. You yeah. Just do, it. Just do it. And and on top of that, they've done better world building than any of the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And destroying. That's true. That's true. Cool. Well, I think that's going to bring us to the end of this one, uh, but we got to do a rating system first, Tyler. Uh, how many arm, how many ripped off arms? <laughs> how many ripped <laughs> have, off Have arms? we done that? I think we probably did that for yeah, one. Yeah, maybe. Uh, how, uh, well, uh, how many <laughs> murdered parents in an alley origin story? <laughs> Would you? I think we've done that too, but we'll we'll do that for this. Uh, would you give Mortal Kombat Legends the Battle of the 
10 realms. Battle of the realms. <laughs> the Nutcracker in the four realms. The, <laughs> there were four realms here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were waiting for the Nutcracker to show up. Uh, as one of the <laughs> I was waiting for Kira Knightley to have this voice again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. And um, Johnny Cage got his nuts cracked. He did. <laughs> He good did. one. Good one. <laughs> that was that was the cameo. That was the cameo. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, I think I need to see. I think I need to see like seven times the the parents getting killed. In the yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's pretty. I mean, pretty I fun. think these are just super fun. Yeah. And uh, you know, it scratches the itch of like you know I was like a you know dra- Dragon Ball Z uh, watching that as a kid, and I really enjoyed that. And I, and I love the it scratches the itch of like oh the the hero powering up as he goes through, yeah. and it's all in the course of eighty minutes, which is way faster than they did it on Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Um, and so I enjoy seeing the the chosen one uh, slowly like come into his powers, and he kind of goes like, I chose, super I chose you. in this movie. Um, which I enjoy. And just, you know, the, I, I just get a kick out of the crazy action. It's just like, it makes me laugh and not in a like, oh my God, that's stupid way, but in just, a, I'm just having so much fun. Right, right. I, I'm a little bit less um, positive toward it than you. I think I'm going to give it five parental murder origin stories. <laughs> um, I think I, I, I still liked it, but I liked the Scorpion one better and the first one better just because of like, it it focused more on Scorpion's like story and Mm -hmm. you know what he was dealing with. So this one's a little bit more like all over the place, you know? Um, I feel like that one was too, I feel like one of our complaints was like, it was also all over the place, but it still had like, I think the one Scorpion storyline, even though it was all spread out was more coherent than whatever is happening to Liu Kang in this movie in my, in my opinion. But, um, and also, I think the other one had more Johnny Cage funny <laughs> lines. Uh, but yeah, I do like, I mean, rather than complaining about all the violence in media that we see, like, it's too late. You can't put all of that back into the bottle. Yeah. And so instead, let's just see violence in more creative and smarter yes, and yeah. more fun ways, you know? So um, that's kind of like how I stand with this series, I guess. Uh, I think we're going to go incremental here, folks. Mm. I'm going to do a six... Uh, needless parent death origin <laughs> stories uh i really agree with everything justin said i think that the mo- the thing that these movies do the best is that the laughing or the enjoyment of like some of the action beats are just fun and mm-hmm. and they they elicit a uh, kind of natural uh joy of of watching them they're 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 a lot of fun i do think that it's a little bit hollow i i want i think that there could be a little bit more stakes i think that there are some things that are a little bit too fan servicey and that there's enough depth to the lore um where i i would almost want it to be like a hard fantasy you know Mm -hmm. i like if there was a political you know katana trying to take over Mm -hmm. outworld and and playing into like almost like how netflix castlevania has done or some of this other really adult animation um i would like to see a little bit more depth in it that being said it's mortal Kombat, and (laughs) uh, i was like would you trade uh you know like five insane death moments for (laughs) two moments of character death Yeah, I think I might, but then at the same time, <laughs> In I then, the Mortal Kombat. I, yeah, movie. I, I know that's the thing. At the same time, then I would probably just want to watch something else. Uh, <laughs> also, so. still no song. Bring back the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop, 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 uh, boop, oh, boop, we did want to talk about uh, in the love scene uh, when oh Jax God. and Sonya finally are like falling in love or Tangerine whatever. Tangerine Dream uh, Johnny, comes Cage, up. Johnny Cage and Sonya. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Not what Jack. did I say? You said Jax and Sonya. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was like some kind of over the top 80s ballad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty funny and super cheesy, but it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I think that's going to bring us to the end of Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to, uh, you know, Warner Brothers for uh, sending us the screener. Uh, we got it so early that there's not even a common sense media dot org <laughs> post yet for this movie. <laughs> But I, I, I'm interested in, to see in the future what they have to say. I'm sure they hate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was a fun one. Yeah. Um, you know we don't we don't have a specific date yet that we're coming back. We're we're in this new form here, and we know for sure that we will be back sometime around October 12th for the uh, premiere of the Chucky 
TV show on sci-fi, which is, you know, coming from Don Mancini. So it's going to be great. Uh, that, that all the headlines that have come out that series is pretty much made for uh freaks like us that have, for some reason have seen every single iteration <laughs> yep. yeah. of chucky ever and so they're definitely going to be rewarding um that kind of loyalty and if you want to catch up with uh, before mm -hmm. the show uh comes on the all those episodes are a ton of fun uh, a lot of our listeners have have claimed that it is their favorite run of movies that we've talked about. Yeah, and, I mean, um, until we hit Land Before Time, that was our longest. That was the series. longest run. That's true. And, and I and I <laughs> and I now remember it very fondly <laughs> after Land Before Time. I was just, I thought we we're going to be even more vague about it, and I was going to talk about spending time with our good buddies out there. But uh, <laughs> nah, well, tell the people. They tell the know. people. They can That's prep. Right. That's uh, right. But yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks for uh, being back with us. We'll see you soon. Uh, maybe before that, maybe uh, after that as well. We'll keep you guys updated. Stay tuned on our socials. And uh, if you have any questions or want to suggest something for us to watch, Elu's, where can people reach out? Yeah, you can email us at sequelrights at gmail.com. And those socials are all at sequelrights, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And please rate and review us on iTunes. Five stars goes a long way to helping other people find us. Uh, if you are going through our Chucky episodes, uh, or, or if you've already reviewed, post our Chucky episodes, share those out there. And if you leave any questions in the comments about uh, the Chucky fran ch franchise in particular, uh, we will answer them on air Sure. in our next episode. That's right. All right. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you next time. You're next. Get over here. Yeah! Kick his ass! Finish him. Fatality.